Hello everyone, this is Shahid Raish from SIF 2024 and this is the 20th anniversary for SIF. I'm really privileged to be with Dr. Farooq Jafar who is uh, from MGH talking about a very important topic today. It's about the imaging state of the art for cardiovascular intervention. Nice Thanks so much, Chatty. Great to great to be here and great to speak with you. Yeah, very good, very good talk today. I we want more cardiologists to do more imaging. Uh, you presented phenomenal data, so let's kind of dive quickly to the topic itself. How important? Um, great. Well, I was fortunate to present today on intravascular ultrasound and the use of IVUS and what's really happened in the last ten years is absolutely amazing. There's such a remarkable recognition of the value now. Many years ago, it's, IVUS is 30 years old plus, and um, people had some hunches that would be better to guide PCI, and really the last three years in particular has kind of absolutely driven this message home. And so um, what I shared today was really kind of the major pivotal trials that have informed why intravascular imaging not only helps us do things that make stents look better in the cath lab, but actually reduce events. And what's amazing is that it wasn't just only events of restenosis. Now, and I shared this at the end with Greg Stone's Lancet Network Meta-Analysis, this is the first time that we can show through pooled, randomized control trials, 22 trials, randomized, almost 10,000 patients, that intravascular imaging reduces all-cause death, 25%. It's going to be on your that. How can we ignore this magnitude of data, right? Like, what would we want for ourselves or our family members? Yeah. I definitely, you know, appreciate, like, there's... There's so many issues as to why the adoption rate is only 15% in this country. And that is actually a change. You know, five years ago it was 10%, so we are, we are having positive pressure upward. But that's as fast as we want. Right. I mean, in Japan, where it's fully reimbursed, it's nearly 100% imaging. So reimbursement is an issue, but also, I think, training and interventionists who didn't grow up kind of exposed to this in their fellowships. Yes. And this was very much the case in the 80s and 90s, right? Like that IVUS was really a small minority. And in the 2000s, OCT came. I think it's been daunting, intimidating for the average interventionist who wasn't trained 100%. to think about, how am I gonna reach her? And you know, fortunately for this, it's gonna happen in so many different ways. One is, is that their fellows and their new partners are increasingly exposed to imaging in their program. So they're gonna help train the middle and seniors who have not been, those who are finishing their careers or mid-career who didn't get exposed, it's going to happen organically from their own cap out. But secondly, there's so much going on with automation, right? like the whole AI world that we talk about. The ability to say, hey, here's calcium, here's how thick it is, here's the arc. This is something you should not just step blindly, you should modify it. When those decisions are kind of made easy for the average internationalist, you don't have to spend your time going through 500 images on a pullback and trying to analyze and draw an ROIs. Like if those things are kind of given to interventionists as a binary thing to do, then here's where you need to land a stent, here's where you need to modify, here's where you need to post dilate further, you're gonna have a beautiful yeah, result. You want that steep learning curve to come down as low really as possible. Granular nuggets yes. for the interventionists about what to do. Yeah. At some point, we really will have machines telling us where to put the stand yeah. and what size to choose and how to post out and how to prep the best. And interventionists may not mind that much. I mean, we all have Absolutely. crutches, we have calendars, we have Siri, we have many ways to <laughs> stay on track. Like, who wouldn't like a coach saying, hey, okay. here's a suggestion based on 10 million Ivises that yes. have been pulled together, and here's our AI database and, saying and, uh, this is the lesion that you yeah, need to treat over, this way. And overall, these cardiologists would like to do the best for their patient. The, the intention is good, totally. but is, as you said, they want to make this process easy for them yep. to get that result that they're looking for. So one is that inertia and in education and teaching. Do you think it's happening soon? I think it's happening. The enthusiasm, as you know from your fellows that you train, that the interest in imaging is amazing, right? And especially both with IVUS high def and OCT, which is super high definition. People love seeing what they're treating. Now, I, I do always have to challenge our fellows to be able to actually stent lesions without imaging. 
because they're so used to it. In certain situations, your devices are gonna be failing, you're gonna be short, you may have a contrast limitation for us, and you just gotta be able to do stuff. But by and large, they do a far better job with image guidance. The stents are bigger, they're not ending in plaque, they're not seeing, they're not leaving dissections behind, they're treating, like this all happens because of invasive imaging. Absolutely. So um, the, you know, the second part of this is reimbursement. We need a class one guideline from our societies based on this network meta-analysis. I'm hopeful that we will see all the reductions in events, in restenosis, MI, stent thrombosis, death. Yeah, this up. will be enough to make it a class one. And when there is a class one, then the ability to enhance reimbursement for class one activities should be stronger. And that will also be a partial motivator, we hope, for um, the community to say, all right, well, the time investing in doing this is worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Jaffa, for your time. Really, very, uh, very concise five minutes about the barriers for uh, adapting imaging in the cardiovascular lab. Thank you so much for your time. For everybody watching us on SIF YouTube channel, this is Shad Reyes from SIF 2024. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, bud.